Hello. I'm Melinda Condon, Executive Director of the Pennsylvania News Media Association Foundation. Welcome to our online celebration of the 2020 Keystone Media Awards, where we honor the best of Pennsylvania's print, digital, and broadcast journalism produced in 2019. We know that 2020 has been a year unlike any other for our state, the country, the world, and for the news industry. Amazing work continues to be produced across Pennsylvania during this direst and most uncertain of times. Dating back to the 1950s, the Keystone Media Awards reinforce excellence by individuals in the news profession by recognizing journalism that consistently provides relevance, integrity, and initiative in serving readers and faithfully fulfills its First Amendment rights and responsibilities. Further, the Keystone Media Awards stimulate journalists to improve their craft and ultimately improve their community. In 2020, the Keystone Press Awards were merged with the PAPME News Excellent Awards, including the AP Broadcast Awards. The PNA Foundation manages the contest, and this year we received more than 2,700 entries from 122 different news organizations. Entries were judged by the Colorado Press Association with first, second, and honorable mention awards presented in each category as determined by the judges. News companies accumulating the highest total points in each division, including print, digital, and broadcast, are recognized as sweepstakes and outstanding news operation winners. Lists of all winners across the seven newspaper and four broadcast divisions are available for review on the PNA website. Through this video, we are sharing the top winners. While the overall winners are specific to their divisions, spe special awards are selected across all divisions. As the First Amendment is the foundation and strength of outstanding journalism, we'll start with two awards recognizing efforts to defend it and freedom of the press. The John V. R. Bull Freedom of Information Award is named in honor of the retired Philadelphia Inquirer editor, who was also a founding member and leader of the First Amendment Coalition. This award honors a journalist or news organization for exceptional work advancing or upholding the cause of freedom of information. The 2020 Bull Award is presented to Angela Columbus of Spotlight PA and the staff of the caucus for Show Us the Receipts. This year-long investigation found Pennsylvania lawmakers operating under some of the weakest campaign finance laws in the country obscured nearly $3.5 million in campaign spending from 2016 through 2018. The investigation found charges for lavish dinners, foreign trips, clothes, liquor, sports tickets, and country club memberships. This series prompted embarrassed lawmakers to seek limits on public access to their expenses, a move they abandoned after it was reported. It also prompted legislation that would limit campaign money and impose stricter disclosure rules. Hello, I'm Angela Columbus, and on behalf of Spotlight PA, it is truly an honor to accept the John V. R. Bull Freedom of Information Award from such a prestigious organization, an organization that fights every day for a free and independent press and access to public records. I want to thank Spotlight PA editor Chris Baxter and caucus editor Tom Merce for believing in this story and for helping us navigate the many obstacles that were placed in our way. I'm Brad Bumstead, Bureau Chief and Investigative Reporter for the caucus, and I wanna thank the members of our team who, who played an extraordinary role in this, including Mike Warshagen, uh, our Pittsburgh reporter, uh, who, who built the campaign finance database that was really the keystone of this, this project, uh, also, Paula Knudsen and Sam Janish. Thanks to the editors that Angela mentioned for giving us the time to be able to do this story. Thank you. Thank you. Winners of the Broadcast First Amendment Award demonstrate a news organization's ability to fulfill its public service role and to overcome obstacles in gathering information vital to a free society. This year's winner, Reed Frazier of the Allegheny Front, WESA, and State Impact PA, waged a battle to report on long-sealed settlement details between the gas drilling company Range Resources and Washington County neighbors. Hi, I'm Reed Frazier. On behalf of the Allegheny Front, State Impact Pennsylvania, and WESA, I'd like to thank the judges for awarding us this prize. 
a natural gas company, Range Resources, got a judge to issue a gag order to prevent us from publishing our story about a settlement between the company and a group of plaintiffs in an environmental case. But thanks to the work of our attorney, David Strasberger, we went to court and won. This award is especially humbling because there are so many great journalists in Pennsylvania who are out there every day fighting for our freedoms of speech and of expression. So once again, thank you and good luck to everyone. For our first sweepstakes recognitions, we begin with Division 7, niche publications of all sizes. As mentioned earlier, one news organization is recognized in each division for receiving the most points in that division. This year we had a tie in Division 7. Recognized are the Pittsburgh Business Times and the Caucus Harrisburg. Winning the sweepstakes for the third straight year in our division, a tremendous honor for the caucus. I'm Brad Bumstead, Bureau Chief of the caucus and an investigative reporter. Uh, our team includes uh, Paula Knudsen, Mike Warshagen, and Sam Janish, uh, also investigative reporters. We're proud of our team and the work we've done on deep dives and investigative stories that have rattled cages in Harrisburg. We want to thank the judges and the Pennsylvania News, News Media Association for making these wards available as newspapers work toward accountability and transparency of public officials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For TV stations licensed to cities in the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh markets, KDKA TV Pittsburgh is recognized. For more than 70 years, KDKA TV has been a valued and trusted part of the greater Pittsburgh community. KDK is the most watched TV station in Pittsburgh for a reason. We work hard to earn it every day. We pride ourselves on our coverage of the big stories, from breaking news to exclusive interviews. We're especially proud of two reports we did last year in the months following the massacre at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue, including this exclusive interview with one of the two survivors. I knew it was gunshots. My mother knew it was gunshots. She was scared. And this report on the trip of healing that some of the synagogue's members took to Charleston, South Carolina, 
to visit with parishioners of Mother Emanuel AME Church, site of a mass shooting in 2015. We're also really proud of a new series we launched last year called KDK Mysteries, where we dive deep into local high profile cold cases to try to get families some closure. He wouldn't want me to be a victim. He'd say, Pam, now it's time to stop that. Let's figure this out. And that's all I'm trying to do. At KDK, we're also committed to investigative reporting, as evidenced by our series of investigative reports into alleged wasteful spending in the Pittsburgh public schools. We also recognize the value of a great feature story like this one about a little boy with rapid aging disease who got to meet his idol on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm 13 currently right now, and my body is like 70 years old. And of course, day in and day out, we chase the news, weather and sports stories that are important to our viewers, both on air and online, including our new streaming service, CBSN Pittsburgh. Those of us who've come behind KDK's pioneering giants continue to do our best to build upon their foundation. And we're proud to know that 70 years later, KDK's work continues to set a standard of excellence. For small market TV stations licensed outside of the TV1 market, WHTM TV Harrisburg is honored. From staff awards to individual recognitions, we now move to distinguished awards for writing, photography, and video. Each winner receives an engraved award as well as a $500 cash prize. The purpose of the Distinguished Writing Award is to showcase quality writing, and the award is judged solely on the quality of writing. The winner of the 2020 Distinguished Writing Award is David McKeel of the Reading Eagle. Hi, my name is Dave McKeel. I'm a reporter with the Reading Eagle. Um, instead of uh, thanking a bunch of people for this award, instead, I'd just like to say how proud I am to be a journalist in Pennsylvania. Despite all the hurdles that we face, and, and we all know what they are, um, people around the state are just doing such amazing work and I'm so happy to be part of it. Thank you. This Distinguished Photography Award honors Paul Vathis, the late Pulitzer Prize winning AP photographer from Pennsylvania. The award recognizes one photographer whose portfolio of published photography shows the strong journalistic instinct, all purpose skills and dedication that were the hallmarks of Paul Vathis's 56 year career. Our 2020 winner is Christopher Dolan of the Times Tribune Scranton. In Christopher's words, thank you to the Pennsylvania News Media Association for the honor of the year's Paul Vathis Memorial Photography Portfolio Award. It is humbling to receive such a prestigious award for my work covering Northeast Pennsylvania for the Times Tribune in Scranton. Working as a photojournalist gives me an incredible opportunity to meet so many different and diverse people from many different backgrounds and a chance to tell their stories. When community members ask me what the best part of my job is, I always say the same thing. Every day is something different. On days when my calendar is packed with 10 assignments and on light days spent driving around looking for wild art, there's always something to find and a story to tell. It has been a privilege to document news, sports, and life in general in Northeast Pennsylvania during my years at the Times Tribune. I would like to thank our managing editor, Joe Buckowitz, for his constant encouragement and advice and for being my sounding board for ideas, even when they come in the form of a 12 a.m. text message. I am grateful for all the Times Tribune editors and reporters who together make our newsroom a great team. Thank you again to the Pennsylvania News Media Association Foundation for this incredible honor. I am humbled to be recognized. The Calkins Family Distinguished Video Award recognizes the best use of video by an individual. Judges considered content and production quality, as well as the value, creativity, and impact of the videos. Rashad Hardnett of the Philadelphia Inquirer is honored. I am so honored and humbled to be the Calkins Family Distinguished Video Award winner this year. It's a huge honor, and I want to go ahead and thank Frank Visa and Denise Keenan, who are my editors at The Inquirer. I also wanted to say two of the three videos that I submitted for the awards are actually a part of a larger series that we do highlighting Black-owned businesses in Philadelphia. It's a project that I work on with my good friend and colleague, Brandon Hardin. Some of those businesses had to shut down due to COVID. Some of them already were struggling 
to stay afloat for other reasons, financial pressures, development in the area, difficulty getting loans as black business owners. So I wanted to take a moment to honor those business owners for trusting me with their story and for letting me tell it. We appreciate you. Thank you for letting me tell your story. Returning to Sweepstakes Awards, we recognize the Press and Journal, Middletown, as the winner in Division VI, Weekly's Under 6,000 Circulation. For weekly's over 6,000 circulation, the Berg, Harrisburg, garners the Sweepstakes Award. Hi, this is Larry Binda, co-publisher and editor-in-chief of the Berg. We're honored to receive this year's Keystone Sweepstakes Award. What I love most about the annual Keystones isn't the awards themselves, or the affirmation of a job well done, or even the banquet, though I do enjoy all of these things. What I love most is the opportunity to review our body of work over the past year. Each year, when I put together our submissions, I rediscover stories or columns or artwork, almost like I'm finding them for the first time. Through this video, you'll see some of the best work we've done and the community that we serve. You may know Harrisburg as a state capital and all that that implies, but maybe I can help you see it through our eyes as a place full of people living their own unique lives and it's up to us to tell their stories. Thank you to the PNA Foundation for sponsoring the annual Keystones and to the judges who deemed our work to be among the best in the Commonwealth. We hope to see everyone next year in person at the banquet. Returning to individual awards, we are delighted to present the Emerging Journalist Award sponsored by the LenFest Institute. This award encourages talented young journalists to continue in their careers and is open to professional journalists with two years or less experience. Jillian McColdrick of LNP Lancaster is recognized. Thank you to the Pennsylvania News Media Association and the LenFest Institute for this Emerging Journalist Award. A special thanks to my editors at LNP Lancaster Online. Uh, they have given me so many opportunities and leeway to um, get so much experience in my first year as a professional journalist. And I'm really excited to be able to continue as a reporter in Pennsylvania's newspapers and media across the state. Thank you. Public Notice Award recognizes excellence in journalism that draws reader attention to public notices. The winning entry from Pennsylvania will be entered into the national competition to buy for the national award of $500 in conjunction with the Public Notice Resource Center. For the seventh year in a row, Jim Lockwood of the Times Tribune Scranton receives this award. Hear ye, hear ye, public notice.
The Diverse Journalist Award recognizes a talented journalist of a diverse background for outstanding contributions to his or her newsroom. Along with an engraved plaque, the winner receives a $500 cash award sponsored by the Lenfest Institute. We are pleased to present this award to Harubi Miko, LNP, Lancaster. I'm very excited and thankful to receive this award, and I just want to thank my editors who gave me the opportunity to work on a project this size my first year of reporting, and the Steinman Foundation who gave the grant that made the project possible in the first place, and also all of my colleagues who gave their mornings to drive around the county and collect water samples um, and then drive it six hours to a lab. And I'm honestly just very excited that clean water is getting this level of attention. And again, I just want to say thank you. For Division IV, multi-day publications under 10,000 circulation, our Sweet Stakes Award winner is the Sentinel, Carlisle. Circulation of 10,000 to 19,000, the York Daily Record Sunday News is the winner of the Division III Sweepstakes Award. It is a tremendous honor to accept the Division III Keystone Sweepstakes Award. This award holds a special value as it recognizes the huge array of achievements from across the newsroom and across the span of the year. The Sweepstakes recognizes a general culture of excellence, and I am proud to be a part of such a culture at the York Daily Record. This year, we saw that excellence in the form of hard-hitting investigative reporting from Candy Woodall, Dylan Siegelbaum, and the many others who partnered with them on this most important category of journalism. Candy's reporting on mountains of discarded artificial turf exposed a problem that is growing exponentially around the country with no practical solution in sight. Dylan's expose of C.Q. Smith a man who had literally been honored as the citizen of the year, reminded us again that child sexual predators remain in our midst because they earn our trust as they create a culture of fear and repression. But by earning the legitimate trust of many past victims, Dylan did something that even a secret grand jury could not. He told the horrible truth of what this former scoutmaster had done. Our staff drew on their dedication perseverance, creativity, and compassion in telling award-winning stories of athletes and coaches, parents, children, and even wild animals. This consistent pursuit of excellence helps our staff even today as we answer the high calling of journalism as the coronavirus has changed everything in our community. I would like to thank everyone at the YDR for all they do every day to help our readers keep themselves and their families safe. Thanks again to the PNA for recognizing the work of the York Daily Record. In Division Two, circulation of 20,000 to 49,999, the Sweepstakes Award winner is the Times Tribune, Scranton.
Toby, that bird, that beard is crazy, man. I'm okay. It's gotten rave reviews by everyone that I've seen. <laughs> okay. It's been a lot of time and effort. No, no one understands the shampooing and conditioning. I don't know what to say. I have a rap to tell you. I have a rap to tell you. I'm taping regularly. I'm taping regularly. Hey, thank you all for not being here. I have some big news to share. After 12 years, we won the PNA Sweepstakes Award for Best Overall Newspaper. So when do we get to take our victory lap? Yeah, when's the party? That's the bad news. The pandemic canceled the party. Is it just me or has anybody noticed that uh, the coronavirus kind of looks like an asterisk? For AM, FM, AM only, or FM only stations licensed to cities in the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh markets, the outstanding station is 90.5 WESA FM Pittsburgh. Thank you to the Keystone Media Awards for honoring WESA with the Outstanding News Operation Award. It's a great and appreciated recognition for a year of hard work from our reporters, producers, anchors, and editors. 2019 was a challenging year for news in Pittsburgh. The city continued to recover and heal from the Tree of Life shooting. City Council passed controversial gun control legislation. Protests erupted after a police officer was tried and acquitted for the 2018 killing of a black teenager named Antoine Rose. WESA tackled all those hard stories, but we also shared uplifting ones, including new ways schools are teaching evolution, why a city's sidewalks are crucial to its health, and how scientists are working to save wildlife and habitats. We couldn't be more proud of the work our newsroom has done, and we're glad to share it with Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania. Thank you again to the Keystone Media Awards for the recognition. For AM, FM, AM only, or FM only stations licensed outside the Radio 1 market, WITF FM State Impact Pennsylvania, Harrisburg is recognized. Continuing the tradition of the news media as the fourth estate, the PNA Foundation Public Service Award is presented to the news company that has helped improve the community through public service leadership. Entrants are judged on the following criteria. A significant effort beyond the scope of the newspaper's normal routine, the initiative and activities of the newspaper, and the results of these efforts. Honored with this award is LMP Lancaster for their Democracy Day project. George Washington and his rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation were the inspiration for this day-long event that celebrated citizenship, promoted voter education, and encouraged civic engagement. Two student delegates and one teacher from each of 28 public, private, and parochial schools in Lancaster and Lebanon counties gathered at Donegal High School to examine some of today's most contentious issues within the moral framework that served America's first president. The video production team here at LNP and Lancaster Online is excited to receive the Public Service Award for our work on the production of Democracy Day here in Lancaster County. It was our pleasure to work with local politicians and students to help raise awareness of civil discourse and how we can value each other's opinions and perspectives to gain understanding in today's society. Thank, Thank you. you. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette is recognized as a sweepstakes award winner in Division I multi-day publications over 50,000 circulation. I'm tremendously proud of the staff of the Post-Gazette the writers, the editors, everyone who works at the Post-Gazette. I'm proud to be associated with them. Some of the work you're going to see glimpses of now give you an idea of what the staff of the Post-Gazette is capable of. And I'm proud not just of the Keystone Awards, which we swept this year. People can win awards sort of by consciously trying to win awards. I'm proud of these awards because of the body of work they represent. 
And that body of work is work that serves the common good, serves the common weal. That work is represented here as it was two years ago with the Pulitzer Prize, but I think it's represented every day in the Post-Gazette, not just in response to something like Tree of Life, but as we've been responding to COVID. Um, our work has been exceptional, I think, and exceptionally devoted. Um, the purpose of journalism is to try to help citizens better understand their community and their world. And we've worked very hard during COVID as we work every day to fulfill that mission. So now you'll see a little of what we've done in the past year, which represents not so much uh, winning awards, but uh, a body of work and a body of dedicated workers. The Reader Initiative Award was developed by the PNA Foundation to honor efforts by Pennsylvania newspapers to grow readership through innovative initiatives. The award recognizes projects that could be success stories while others have been learning lessons. But no matter, every day, newspapers continue to seek new ways to touch readers. The York Daily Record, Sunday News, is recognized for their ongoing efforts to attract new readers through innovative community outreach projects that range from public forums to free exercise programs to live storytelling to social media engagement and more. Hey everyone, York Daily Record Community Engagement Editor Scott Fisher here, coming to you from my COVID-19 bunker. I just want to briefly thank the judges for recognizing the work Daily Record journalists did in 2019 to engage readers and develop new audiences. I'm proud of the great work our staff did, looking back at race relations in our community on the 50th anniversary of race riots in our town, a topic that couldn't be more relevant as Black Lives Matter protests sweep our state and nation. We also engaged readers with innovative uses of Facebook groups, such as Fixing York and No Sweat York, to build younger, more diverse audiences. And our York Storytellers Project built community by bringing people together for evenings of live, true, first-person stories. These are challenging times on a number of fronts, but it's a time when strong local journalism is more important than ever. Finding new ways to connect with readers keeps us relevant and engaged. Thank you. The G. Richard Dew Award, the PNA Foundation's most prestigious honor for outstanding journalism, was established in memory of G. Richard Dew, former general manager of PNA and former executive director of the Pennsylvania Society of News Editors. This award is given to an individual or organization that has made an outstanding contribution to the community or state through an article or series of articles. Recipients of this award are honored for work that improves the quality of community life, enhances the public's understanding of the role of news media, and exemplifies journalistic responsiveness to matters of public interest. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette receives the Dew Award for their outstanding series, Coverings, an unprecedented multi-state investigation into the hidden crimes of one of America's most reclusive religious movements. Their months-long investigation led to a six-part multimedia series based on multiple reporting trips to Amish and Mennonite communities of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. The Post-Gazette team discovered dozens of cases of childhood sexual abuse and criminal cover-up in these communities. These cases had played out quietly in rural courthouses over the past decade in multiple states. The reporters were covering a largely off-grid set of communities with a deep wariness towards outsiders, but they patiently gained the confidence of sources through hours of conversation, and they documented the systemic reality of such abuse by painstakingly scouring court documents. The covering series galvanized current and former members of Amish and Mennonite communities in Pennsylvania and throughout North America. There were people praying for a journalistic investigation such as coverings, one survivor said. A lot of the victims are much more empowered and have a stronger voice. Another said, the whole world changed in a year. This is Peter Smith, religion editor with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. 
speaking on behalf of my colleagues, Stephanie Strasberg, Shelley Bradbury, and all of our Post-Gazette editors and colleagues who supported, assisted, and believed in this project from start to finish. We would like to thank the Pennsylvania News Media Association for this deeply meaningful honor. We'd especially like to thank all of those who shared their stories with us, including current and former Mennonites and Amish, and who in turn enabled us to share their stories. Their accounts were painful and intimate, but also included moments of great empowerment. We were with them to witness in real time as they sought, and in some cases received, justice long delayed. Thank you again for this honor and for the work you do with the Keystones to lift up examples of impactful journalism. As we conclude, winners are reminded that certificates and engraved awards were mailed to winning newsrooms in July. Plaques are available at no charge by completing a form on the Keystones page of the PNA website. Congratulations to all the 2020 Keystone Media Award winners. Thank you for viewing this virtual celebration. We look forward to seeing you next year and encourage you to enter the 2021 Keystone Media Awards.